to investors. This should be the first step in what will likely be a long and rather nasty chain. Plus, airline chaos as the Iceland volcano, I'm sure you're familiar, grounding jets in Europe, forcing travelers to get creative, uh, which leads us to ask you, which Monty Python star took a $5,000 cab ride from Norway to Belgium because of this volcano? And spare the rod, spoil the child, or so they say, why parents in one town brought back paddling to schools. We might want to bring back paddling for Goldman Sachs and the politicians that make the laws for them. The show starts right now. Well, good afternoon today uh, in America. Years of high sky, sky high profits and billions of dollars in paid bonuses may finally be catching up to Goldman Sachs. The Securities and Exchange Commission today filing a suit against Goldman and one of its vice presidents, 31-year-old Fabrice Torre, alleging that Fabrice Torre created loans knowing that the value and quality of the loans he was creating were not nearly as good as he was advertising them to be to Goldman's customers. Goldman then stands accused of selling those loans to customers and then betting that they will fail, seeking to cash in when they did. Here's the SEC's Director of Enforcement. The fact of the matter is the investors, certain representations were made to the investors and um, those representations were not accurate. So uh, put simply, here's how the SEC anyway claims it all went down. I want you to imagine for a second that I'm the biggest car company in the country and that a client of mine comes and says to me, I've got an, or a, 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 an idea for you, Dylan, to design a car that will crash. So... I say, I will make this bad car on behalf of my client and sell it to people like you who are watching this TV show, but I'm not going to tell you what I did to the car. So I've got a shiny red Ferrari right here. It looks lovely. I've designed it with my friend. Here's the key thing. In order for you to buy this, in order for me to know that it's going to blow up and then bet on it, I have to reach into the back here real quick and hand pick how it's constructed. So I'm going to take the engine part out here. There's one other one here. That's fine. And I'm not going to actually tell you. Hang on. Let me just cover that up. I've got some friends in government. They won't mind. And now I sell you what appears to be a perfectly good car. As I sell it to you, and I've manufactured the car, mind you, I then bet that the car will crash. It does because it has been screwed with by me. When it hits the wall, I rake in the dough not only from selling the car, but from the bet, the insurance bet that I made that the car will crash at the time that I sold it to you. I, as the car salesman, get paid twice, once when I sell it, again when it crashes, on the insurance policy. Goldman Sachs, in their case, they get the money from selling the car, and then they bought the insurance. You're going to love this. They bought the insurance from AIG. Remember them? And AIG, remember, didn't have the money to pay off those bets on all these cars that Goldman was betting were going to crash. That's why you, the taxpayer, ponied up $173 billion to pay out the bets that AIG was taking. 100 cents on the dollar. And Tim Geithner, who's our Treasury Secretary, was the person who decided that payout was a good idea and who refuses to this day to show us the emails between Goldman Sachs and AIG, even though we provided them all the money to pay out on these bets. And you thought the politicians weren't working for you. Goldman, of course, a poster child for a practice that they were very good at, selling bonds instead of cars. But the case here is that they were deliberately creating and selling bad bonds on purpose, sticking the consequences with foreign banks or, most horrendously, selling those bonds to our teachers, police, judges, and other state pension fund holders in this country. Imagine selling toxic bonds to those people knowingly and then going to AIG and betting that they would collapse and then blackmailing the U.S. government into paying through AIG into Goldman Sachs and out to the Goldman client, in this case, John Paulson. That will be the legacy of the bubble that burst 
for us as a generation. A cascade of underwater mortgages created by these bad bonds, busted pension funds who bought the bad bonds, a bankrupt nation laden with debt, and a massive wealth transfer, the largest we have ever seen, to the bank scammers who have been perpetrating and are still to this day perpetrating this con against us. Reaction pouring in from people who have been calling this a scam from the start. Former New York Governor Elliot Spitzer, the so-called Sheriff of Wall Street, saying this morning, this is a perfect example of why the big banks need to be broken up. Because when you have banks playing so many sides, creating bonds, trading bonds, all this business, inevitably they will be betting against their own clients. This, the governor says, is bound to happen. The suit against Goldman may just be the tip of the iceberg in this practice. It will hopefully become a wide-ranging probe that reveals to us what was going on between AIG and Goldman Sachs and how pension fund managers were being seduced with unusually high returns, with faulty securities that were designed to explode after they have been sold. Again, a probe that should stretch far beyond failure to disclose to include the very corruption that helped to build those bad loans on purpose in the first place as a scam to sell these exploding bonds. This, my friends, boils down to some very simple questions for every American and every politician. Are you and are we a country that is okay with deliberately designing faulty cars and then betting that they will crash? Are you okay with that? Are you okay with deliberately creating and selling faulty loans and then betting they will collapse in the process, leaving taxpayers, future generations, teachers, police, police and pensioners, not to mention homeowners, on the hook with the banksters who control our politicians with all the money. Are you okay with that?